welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to talk about the solution for the quiz which I posted on my YouTube. So if you have seen this video, can you guess the sensor? I posted a couple of days back, exactly a one week ago, in which there were different sensors and, and I was asking about if you know this sensor and I promise you that I'm gonna show you the real sensors. So I'm making this video along with Risha, who's running a very successful YouTube channel with a lot of sensors and relays and basic fundamental details. So check it out if you haven't seen. But now we are going to explain you how these sensors are working, what is the operation principle, and how you can use it in your own process if you want. So let's start with the video first and see what was in the video. So let's start with a very intense music. <laughs> so can you guess what type of sensors are used? So let's have a look. So the first one was this one. So these first few sensors, like diffuse sensors and inductive, capacitive, Rishabh is going to explain. So I switched this video over to Rishabh and he's going to talk about these sensors. So thank you Rajveer for having me here. So the first sensor, which is the sensor A, is a diffuse type photoelectric sensor. And in diffuse type photoelectric sensor, you get a transmitter and receiver, which is built into a signal housing. So in the transmitter side, you can get a red light type transmitter or an infrared type transmitter. But in the receiver side, you will get a photodiode. So in the working, what happens is that when the light from the transmitter is transmitted and when it falls on the target, the light is reflected back to the receiver. And when the receiver receives certain amount of light, the receiver, the sensor gets the output in the form of a PNP type output or a NPN type output, which is a digital signal. And you can see how the target is moving in front of the sensor and the sensor is giving the output. The main part you need to focus upon is that the sensor's sensing range will vary on the color of the target. So you, you will get the maximum sensing range on white target and minimum sensing range on the black target. So the second sensor, which is the sensor B, is a capacitive type sensor. So capacitive sensor will detect both the metallic and plastic target. So what happens is that when any target which has a certain amount of density, whether it be a liquid or powder or anything that is a more dense material and has a certain amount of density which can be detected by the sensor, the sensor will give the output. You can also see how the different targets the sensor is responding upon and you can also see the sensor will detect the metallic target also. But in inductive type sensor, they will not detect the plastic target, but capacitive type sensor will detect the metallic target as well as the plastic target. As the diameter of the sensor increases, the range of the sensor also increases. Usually the range of the capacitive sensor is about 2 mm to 15 mm. But in automation, you can also change the sensing range by using a sensitivity adjustment which is given at the back of the sensor. So now coming to the third sensor or the sensor C is an inductive type proximity sensor. So inductive type proximity sensor will only detect metallic target. And the working principle of the sensor is the electromagnetic induction and it uses the concept of eddy current. So what happens is that when any target comes in the range of the sensor, the sensor will detect the presence of the metallic target. And we need to understand the fact that the range of the sensor will increase with the increase in diameter of the sensor. So greater the diameter of the sensor, greater will be the sensing range of the sensor. Usually you will get the sensing range of an inductive type proximity sensor from about 2 mm to 15 mm, which also depends upon the diameter of the sensor. The sensor is a digital sensor which will give the output in the form of PNP and NPN type. And you can also see how this sensor is responding with a plastic target and a metallic target. The sensor will detect the metallic target and it will not detect a plastic target. Now Rajvi will explain you about the fourth sensor, which is a 3D vision sensor. All right, that was a really nice explanation with deep details. All right, let's move ahead. Now we have a vision sensor you can see on my screen. And after this vision sensor, I have another sensor, which you might have already guessed. And that is this one. And most of, the, most of you couldn't guess the sensor. 
So let's see what is the sensor. What I've done is I've combined these two sensors, vision and RFID. Okay, this is RFID <laughs> together. And I'm gonna show you a small application of that. So let's see my setup. All right, so let's see what's happening here. This is my setup, which I try to replicate what is happening in Factory Lab. But here I have combined both of the sensors. So the first one is my 3D camera. You can see here it's O3D300 from IF Electronics. This is going to measure the boxes measurement. So these are the boxes which I have, number one, number two, and three. And if you notice, each of these boxes have this blue tag connected to it, like this one. This is an RFID tag connected to each of the box to find out what is the RFID of this box. So this is just to replicate what is happening in factory IO. And that's the tag which you can see on the table. It's just an RFID tag. This is what I link to all these boxes. And here you will see an RFID read write head. This is going to read the RFID tag or RFID information inside this tag. So if I bring this tag in the near, you will see there is a small light on the bottom which says the tag is present. And you can also see in the screen the tag is detected. If I take it back, you will see the tag is gone. So it has some range where you can detect the information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these boxes next to this RFID read write head. And those boxes are aligned right below this camera, this 3D camera. So both of these sensors will trigger and measure the information. So this will measure the three dimension information for the box and the bottom one will just read the tag. So this will be displayed on the HMI. So let's try with the first box. I'm gonna bring this one here and I have to make sure this is going to be in the range. So now this is in the range and I can see on my screen, this is detected. Now all I have to do is just press the read value and see what other values I'm getting. So I'm gonna hold this camera here. I'm just doing it with my mobile phone. And I'm gonna press read values. And when I do that, you will see the values are red. This is out of ID value one, which is inside the tag, and length, width, and height of this box. Let's try again with the next box. So I will take this box away. I have to make sure the other box also comes in the range of my tag. This is perfect. So the box is here now, and I have to press read tag. So in this case, I will go back again on my HMI simulation screen. I press read value. I have second value here. Very nice. Similarly, I can do for the third box as well. This goes away and this box comes here. So I don't have a conveyor, but you can understand what I'm trying to explain here. So this box is here again, under the range of my camera and I go and I press read value. And this is my third box information. So that's how these two sensors are working together. One is RFID read write height, which you see in the factory aisle, and this 3D camera. And furthermore, if you see these boxes information are in my PLC. This is my array of structure in which I have status, RFID value, length, width, height, and timestamp. So I have measured the timestamp when this value was recorded. I have the length, width, height information and RFID value. So this is in my PLC database. This is my Siemens PLC. And that's the TF portal. And what I'm doing interesting is this is a part of my course SQL. These values I'm storing in my SQL. So this is my screen, the dashboard, which will store this value in my SQL database. So I can use this values later for any analytic purpose. So what I have to do is I have to just have to click read and it will read all these values in this array and store in the database. So let's do that. So I press read and it's reading the values. And you can see there's a table generated automatically which shows RFID value, its length with height and the timestamp. And this you can also see in your MySQL database here. So that's the extra information which you can do by getting the value from the sensor, storing it into the PLC, and then storing it to MySQL database. This makes it really interesting. All right, and after the RFID, we have another sensor, which was this one. And most of you guessed it correctly, it's a light curtain. And why we use it? We use it for various purposes. For example, here I'm using to measure the height of the object, although I'm not showing you if I'm measuring it, but the purpose was to measure the height of basically big objects which can be which can actually reach this this um, this ray of light and in industry mostly we use it for safety so we call it safety curtains and in the safety i can show you a photo from one of my projects where i was using this so this is the light curtains from bangalore and you can't see the lights in between. This is not visible light. Where you can see here, this is just for demonstration, but in real, you don't see nothing in between. But if you take your hand inside, we had an operation that it will stop everything. 
stop everything on this station because here there is some complex process of pick and place and then there was uh, this is ASRS storing and retrieval system so if somebody takes his hand inside from this direction or from the back side or from uh, from the other side of this uh, megatronics unit it will stop the machine completely and important thing is if you notice this factory aisle here because I can only explain from factory aisle so this is my factory aisle the important thing is in the real life if you take your hand like in the middle you can find out where exactly obstruction occurs so for example if somebody pulls the hand from the bottom or from the top or from the middle middle you can actually find out it in the software so it's intelligent enough to tell you where exactly was the obstruction this was one of the application as a safety so here we are just measuring the boxes but it can be used for safety operation as well another thing if you see the output of these light curtains these are numerical digital and analog so in digital it will just show you which beam is on and off if it's an analog it will give you output in analog or if it's a numerical it will just give you a number based on which segment is on and off but what i'm trying to explain is if it's digital and when I was working on this real life sensor, actually on my project, I realized it's just not the on off signal. This is just not on off. The emitter and receiver, there is one emitter which will send the light, emitter will receive the light and each emitter was sending the signal at certain frequency. I don't rem remember or recall the frequency, you can find it in the manual. So it sends at a certain frequency. And so you can't easily bypass the sensor. You need to have a special frequency to bypass the sensor. And another interesting thing is if your practical structure does not allow you to use to use all the beams, you can disable few of them. That is also possible. For example, here, suppose I have some object which is covering this part and it's a part of my trainer. I don't want to be used as a safety cutoff. I can disable some beams from here or from from the top or from the bottom as well or from the middle as well it's possible so it has a lot of flexibility to use in your industrial processes for different applications more you can read the manuals and find more about the sensor so the next sensor will be explained by Rishabh again for the next one so over back to Rishabh so the last sensor which is the retro reflective type sensor and in this sensor what we do is that we have one sensor mounted at one side and reflector mounted on other side. The main advantage of using this concept of a reflector is to get a higher sensing range. So using a reflector, you get a sensing range of about 3 to 4 meter. Usually in diffuse type photoelectric sensor, you will get a maximum sensing range of about 30 centimeter. But in retro reflective type sensor, you will get a higher sensing range. And the main concept that you need to understand is that these sensors are also digital type sensor. So these sensors will give the output in the form of PNP output or a NPN type output. Now any target which passes between the sensor and the reflector, the sensor will give the output. The main part that you need to focus upon is that the target must be an opaque target and that the target size must be greater than the size of the reflector. The advantage of retro reflective type sensor is that using a retro reflective type sensor we can use this sensor where there are different color of target because in diffuse type photoelectric sensor you will get a variation in sensing range when there are different color of target but in retro reflective type any target which will obstruct the rays between the sensor and reflector you will get the output so that's all you need to know about the the retro reflected type sensor. If you want to explore more on industrial sensor, you can check out my channel too. It is Sparrow 7 Sense and the links are in the description. So this was all about the sensors. Thank you for your comments and for your answers on Facebook, on YouTube, on LinkedIn. If you like this video, you can give us more ideas what kind of applications you want to see both in simulation or in practical approach. And important information, if you are looking forward to learn more about the sensor in a more structured way, Rishabh and I are coming up with a new course on Sensorics or the sensors and its application very soon. So stay tuned. You can subscribe to our channels. Both links are given in this video below for more updates. So stay tuned. See you next very soon. Bye.